So I'm a fan of the at the moment of the metaphor that America is generally for most of its history like a political desert. Um, that water is somehow canaled, channeled away from ever reaching the surface. A lot of times it's repressed. It's water that never forms into a cloud. It's kept inside people. Um, but when it does come out, or at least when it seems like it comes out, it's water that um, is wasted on the energies of a representative de democratic system. Um, and I think democracy, to use another metaphor to mix in, um, is sort of like a dog run. And dogs, they need to get their energy out. Humans have political energies that I would say they occasionally, some of them, that don't repress it need to get out. And they get it out in the uh, representative system, but it doesn't really ever affect any real political change, as most of us who are skeptical and cynical feel like we know. Um, but right now, um, it's raining in the desert. It does do it sometimes. And what, I, what I'm getting at is that the Bernie Sanders um, movement, it's raining. But um, unless we establish some plants and find something to do with this water quick, it's going to be gone again, and everybody's going to go back into the sand, putting their heads in the sand. There'll be no reason to lift your heads out of the sand because there's no water around. I'm, I'm liking where my metaphor is going. There's all these cool little ways of adapting it. Um, but um, so Bernie Sanders' movement is alive. It's the end of September. Um, he's alive. People are excited. He's, he's alive physically, meaning, and he's also alive as a candidate, whatever that means even. Um, but people that are much more important than him as far as the total of the movement, uh, lots of people are really excited. They're finally getting to unite around something, and it happens to be a person which, you know, maybe that's the way it has to start. Um, but what I'm worried about is there's going to be all this energy, and then either he's going to lose the primary or whatever. I don't know if it's even all staged, the whole the whole thing all the way, the whole way down. Um, but at some point, their dreams are going to be squashed if they were hoping... You know, Bernie Sanders is the one, all this stuff. Because, Bern, Bern, you know, no person is the one. you got to look inwards for that. you got to, we need these people to realize they have collective power. Um, and some of them do. I'm not saying they don't. I'm not, um, I'm not the only one. I don't have some special way of seeing the world in this regard that allows me to see this. Um, but I've, I have a fear that, a lot of people who might not be seeing this are ideological anarchists who I'd like to think that I'm comrades with, um, even though I might disagree on a number of issues. Um, I'd hate to think that this political opportunity is squandered because I believe in those crowds at those rallies are people that might not label themselves it. They might not even know much about it. A lot of them are younger, and I feel like that's the most important group uh, to get involved um, they're anarchists whether they know it or not or they are so anti-authoritarian and oppression that they're anarchists in that regard even though they haven't codified it in full-on anti-government, anti-corporate, anti-capital um, kind of modalities yet um, but that's not a reason to not engage with them um, so I'm all for engaging and going to rallies and you know, I'm not planning on going and voting. That's not, I feel like it's just, we got to be willing to deal with the opportunity, though, of people gathering around. I have very little faith that even if Bernie Sanders somehow is elected, that much would change. Um, and that's not just saying that the Congress will get in the way. I think they all, even probably Bernie to a large degree, agree on some core set of principles that they're not going to change things. There's a lot of unsayable, uh, un, un, um, unpolitical political realms that aren't allowed to be politicized by representatives. They're actors. They're actors. Um, 
at the end of it all. So um, I think that people within the movement already and people that are joining it, I think, need to consider what they're going to do with their political energies after Bernie wins or loses or whatever, once he isn't out there speaking and saying things, once he gets power or is returned to power as a, as a senator. I think those people shouldn't be down and ready to give up and stop this collective organizing. I think that you need to really think of some ways to continue that. Um, and I'm not sure how that would be, but I definitely like living arrangements, where you work, why you work there. Are you a better person to society by working there? It does, like, are you hurting society by working at your job? Um, can you somehow find a way to stand up? That, that's where I think most things happen is what kind of job you have and what that company you work for um, actually does. It's not what you do outside of work. It's what your work does to everything outside of itself. So anyways, I'm going to stop here. Um, but I hope that the central theme uh, comes through, reigns through, which is that generally America is a very politically dry place, but we have some opportunities here. We have people, with the, the discourse is opening up. Um, or at least there's an opening that we could insert other ideas and or let them help nurture those ideas to go further along. Or we could just waste it. But uh, it's... I feel like it's too precious and too rare of a thing to waste, um, especially as we get later and later in the game, which I don't think is going to end in a way that any human or any other animal would want. All right? Much love and much peace out to all of you. I appreciate you listening, and I hope we'll meet at a rally, whether it be about Bernie or about something else, or at some other meetings to organize our lives and realize that we have a lot of control over our lives and we don't need um, politicians or any structure to allow us to be free and freely decide our fates. Um, I think that's, to me, that's the definition of, of an anarchist, that we could all do it without anybody being anybody else's boss. All right, much love and peace and respect and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I don't mean to categorize this. Okay, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Bye.